That's really unlucky. Alright, let's play Kronkosaur. Yep, fight that guy and that guy. This little game is four, I believe, because it counts as two fights. Yeah. Alright, we're tapped out again. But, uh. So he's got. So we're gonna hit for five this turn, at least. Going to six. Put some spider eggs in my deck, sure. Lock is one, two, take five down to six. I guess we play this and then we play Wind Singer and just hope for the best. He could have counter spell or removal spell. We're dead to. We're basically dead to either. Are we dead on board? He's got one, two, three, four, five. He's got five power. He's got six power and we're at six life. We got two blockers. See how many removal spells he has. Probably just cast and kill. Yep. All right, if he has another removal spell, we're dead. Otherwise, we get to live at one. And then can maybe cast Polymorph next turn. All right, I'm just going to one. See if we can, if he doesn't have a counter spell, maybe we can stabilize. Alright. I'm gonna have to block one of the lethal ones because these are all unblockable. So going to one. The polymorph turns all of his creatures in play and in his hand into zero ones. Concession. Yep. Alright. We needed to hit that the turn he was he was tapped out basically. And we didn't hit the A3 source that turn. Negate seems good in this matchup. Um Cluck Duckin seems good in this matchup. He's a sweet card. Sapper's charge doesn't seem great. Uh Buccaneer seems medium. A lot of his guys had enter the battlefield effect, so that doesn't seem very good. I'd often been boarding the Root Father out when I board in the Cluckadon, but I feel like we just want to be super threat dense in this matchup. Yeah, we were really let him out of that whole game. We didn't hit we didn't hit the density of cantrips we needed in the early game to, to really stabilize. I think I'm gonna board out the suffocate because a lot of his things seem to be spell based. I think I'm gonna cut uh, Epiphany, just kinda bring the curve down a little bit. Maybe I don't want all four of these. This card's sweet. It uh, gains for life when it comes into play, and it can fight a one-cost thing, so it can fight one of his spiders and gain us four, and just be a 4-4. Four, four. Might want to alter the gem for the Root Father. Why? Flying's good. He has a lot of blockers. Flying and Spell Shield both seem reasonable. Yeah, I'm not going to bring in all the chickens. Spider with two cost. All right, yeah, I'm not gonna bring in all the chickens then. Just gaining life and being able to clock him back seems reasonable. Spiders cost two. Okay, there are one ones that cost two. Play first. Hopefully, I have cantrips and resources this game. Uh, yeah, that sounds great. Blue shard on one. Peak on two for the top two cards, so two blue shards, uh, or time ripple on two possibly. Counter magic or divination on three. I'm 
play this, and then on our third turn, we can ramp plus play another two spells, so we can peak this turn or time ripple if he plays something. He has a two mana guy, that's the one three Lisa that puts spiders into our deck. If he has that, we're just gonna, yep, he has it. Um, I think I'm gonna bounce this even though it doesn't enter the battlefield effect. Do I really care? Yeah, I guess I don't care. He may play something more expensive later. Uh, I'm just gonna make sure we hit all of our resources this game. That's a pretty good draw, because now we get to play our ramp spell, plus have negate or bounce up. This counters a non-troop spell. And then we can use Winter Moon's ability here to shuffle two cards back into our deck. Um, when you download the client, there's a tutorial when you first play that'll get you started on the PvE campaign. And then uh, I'm working on writing something about jumpstarting into the constructed right away. It doesn't cost any money, so it's not like Magic Online where you have to like dump ten dollars into it just to try it. So, get a Sapphire. I'm just going to shift the turn back because I'd like to counter the Vampire Princess if he replays it again next turn. We use Counter Magic on something this turn, and then next turn we can Oracle Song plus play the Negate. Inquisition. All right, I'm just gonna negate that. Or verdict that, I guess we say here. Spiders are exceptionally good against Winter Moon, the Winter Moon deck, because it just draws a bunch of cards. There's one. And get another shard here. This puts me up to six, but I can't use the shard this turn, so I have to choose between holding up counter magic or casting the divination, so. I'm going to choose to hold up counter magic. He's only got two power on the table, so we're under a 10 current turn clock right now. His deck seems kind of sweet, like a tempo control deck. It's got, it's got a clock in it, and it's got counter spells and discard. I wouldn't be surprised to see him just pass the turn here. Yeah, that's exactly what he did. Or we're obviously not using my resources for anything, so we're probably holding counter spells. So I'm gonna play Oracle Song here. Draw two, sweet. He's letting my cantrip or my card advantage resolve, so hopefully we'll bury him eventually. Vampire Princess, I bounced, so he has his Azure Fate Sorceress. Yeah, I'm gonna counter magic this, so I don't want him milling through my cards. Yeah, if you go to hexmeta.com, uh, the platinums are basically a hundred for a dollar. So, like, so if something says a deck says it cost uh, five thousand platinum, it's effectively fifty dollars. This gives an opening to replay the Vampire Princess, but hopefully we can hit a a bounce spell with this Oracle Song here. Get my draw step plus two more to find something to interact with this. I should have boarded in probably my cripples or my destroy target flying creature. I should have just assumed he had uh, the blood usually has these vampires. And hey, look, we hit uh, time ripple exactly. So let's go ahead and I'm going to time ripple this now because this one lets me draw a card when I play it. What's the win count of the deck? We have uh, this guy, which is a 4 6 that um, draws cards and our opponents draws cards. And then we also have uh, a set, an 8-8 flying creature. I'm going to Arcane Focus. This get, lets him know that he has an opening to replay his Vampire Princess. And here's Speak of the Devil, the Root Father. I'm going to grab him. Because if he doesn't play into our Verdict of the Ancient Kings, we can shuffle him back into our deck and make him cheaper. 
And this Wind Singer is almost guaranteed to resolve and lives. We've got two, two, two verdicts in our hand. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him just jam the Vampire Princess again here. Create three Tarantula eggs. Yeah, that one's scary. So this thing creates really scary spider eggs to put in my deck. They come out as five fives and they kill kill my creatures when they come into play. So he obviously has counter magic or removal in his deck, one of the two, in his hand. Things are kind of spiraling right now. This guy is going to get to activate on his turn, which is unfortunate. I am going to get Windsinger online, but he's just going to help me draw more cards. And he's only going to stay online until my opponent starts drawing his Tarantula eggs. So hopefully we don't just like hit a Tarantula egg right away. That would be bad. I'd like to draw. All right. So you're saying there's a chance. This card's really good, and we're only one resource. Oh. oh. Counter that. No, stop it. Bad. That's gross. All right, so he killed my good guy. He stepped out at least, though. It's unfortunate the kill resolved. And now there's three tarantula eggs in my deck. Hopefully we actually hit a tarantula egg this turn so that way we can polymorph it. Succulent cluck ducking. All right, well, let's start with arcane focus. Well, let's not take the spider egg. We'll take the chicken. And then we'll cast this and turn all of his guys into zero ones and also turns all of the cards in his hands into zero ones. He has extinction, which kills everything, and the vampire princess that we knew about. All right, well, now it's a race. Can our chickens finish him off? before he draws a bunch of 5-5s five and they kill us. There's only three 5-5s five in my deck, so hopefully the odds are in my favor. And I guess, do I want to run out both chickens when I know he has a kill all creatures in his hand? Probably not. Let's start with this. There's a shard. Alright, I hit a counter magic. That's good. So I guess I'll play this and I'll play my chickens out one at a time since I have a counter magic now. I'm gonna put Wind Singer and a counter spell back into my deck. Root Father beats Tarantula, yep. Winter Moon is the name of the champion that I'm playing. So everyone gets a, a champion or a legend in the bottom left and my opponent's playing Zormi or something like that. Zormi of Koru. Sweet. He's not going to wrath just my chicken. He might wrath two chickens though. And you can see my opponent got to counter magic, one of my verdicts, so now all of my verdicts cost more, which is unfortunate. Gonna play my cluck ducking out. So we've got eight power on the table. I wouldn't be surprised to see him use extinction here, which is basically uh, damnation. Form four mana blood shards kill all creatures. Yeah. So I'm gonna counter this draw card. he's countering back so I'm actually gonna time ripple my own chicken back to my hand here so I can um, so I can replay it and have